In this video, I'd like to show you how to solve this integral by using trig substitution. The reason we want to use trig substitution is we see that here we have a square root of 1 minus x squared. So to take integral of this part directly is kind of difficult. Therefore, we want to form a triangle and using trig identities to help us make the problem easier to solve. Okay, the first step, let's set x is equal to sine theta. And then we have dx, which is the derivative of the right side uh, sine theta. The derivative of that is cosine theta d theta. Then the next step, we also have the square root of 1 minus x squared. It's going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus sine theta squared. And by using the trig identity, we know that is equal to cosine theta. Okay, so the next step is we want to rewrite the integrals in terms of theta. So the integral becomes, here we have x squared, which is going to be sine theta squared times square root of that, which we already know that's equal to cosine theta, so times cosine theta. Then dx here. We know from this equation is going to equal to times cosine theta d theta. Oh, I forget to write the theta here. Okay, then let's quickly simplify it. Then that's the integral of sine theta squared times cosine theta squared d theta. But here, if we look at it, we still cannot solve it directly. So we will use trig identities to help us further simplify this function. So the equation we're going to use, let me write here, sine theta squared is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. And cosine theta squared is equal to 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. Okay, so let's use these two identities to plug into our equation. And we'll get the integral of sine theta squared, which is 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2 times 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2 d theta. And let's simplify that. We will get integral of the bottom we have 4 the top we have 1 minus cosine 2 theta squared d theta. And in here we still have to the second power. So we want to use this equation again to lower the power uh, for cosine theta. So we would have the integral of 4 1 minus we have, let me change a color. We have 1 plus cosine 4 theta divided by 2 d theta. Okay, let's go to the next page.
and to simplify this function we will have the integral of 1 minus cosine 4 theta times 1 eighth d theta Okay, the next step is we can finally integrate this function. We can take the 1 over 8 out or keep it inside. Um, it's up to you. But when we integrate, um, we're going to break the integral into these two parts. Let's just take the 1 8 out for simplicity reason. 8 times the integral of... 1 d theta minus the integral of cosine 4 theta d theta. Okay, and that gives us 1 over 8 theta minus sine 4 theta divided by Right, because uh, if we take the derivative of sine 4 theta, then that's cosine 4 theta times 4 because we have a coefficient of 1, so that's we need to divide that by 4. Now we're very close to the answer for this question. The last step we need to do is to substitute back from theta to x. Because initially when we set it, x is equal to sine theta. Therefore, theta is equal to arc sine of x. Arc sine is like the inverse operation of sine. So in that sense, our answer would be 1 eighth times theta, which is arc sine of x minus sine 4 theta, which is sine 4 arc sine x divided by 4. And then plus c, which is plus the constant, because this is indefinite integral. So here we go. This is the answer for this question.